Uh, uh, principal components analysis, it's, uh, it, it's called PCA, uh, what it does is it defines a new set of dimensions. And the way it does that is uh, kind of like that. So uh, it takes your data set, so this may be your data set, uh, it first looks for the direction in that data set, sort of uh, try to draw a line such that along that line you have the greatest amount of variance in the data. So the data points are basically spread out as far as possible. And the line that it's picking, it's not necessarily the, the x or the y or the depth, right? It could be any line in this space. So you pick a line along which the data is spread out the most, you freeze it, and then the next dimension you pick has to be perpendicular to the first line. And you keep doing that on and on and on, right? So in this data set, for example, that line, the red vector, that represents the direction in which the data is spread out the most. And then I freeze it and look for lines that are perpendicular to that. And the second one, that would be the second principal component, is this blue vector right there, right? And then the third one would be the depth. And that's a tiny, tiny little principal component because my data looks kind of like a sheet in that uh, cube. So that's the idea of PCA. You look for the dimension with the greatest variance, and then you look for the one that's perpendicular but has the greatest remaining variance, and so on and so forth. Right. Now, once you come up with these dimensions, you then change the coordinates of each data point so that each data point is in the new set of dimensions. So that's an example for that. That data point right there, right, the yellow one, um, it had coordinates x1, x2, and x3 previously, right? Uh, it, was, it was a 3D representation. Maybe after I do PCA, I decide to keep only two dimensions. So that's my first principal component. That's my second principal component. So now all I do is I look at, uh, I project this yellow point to the red dimension and see where it ends up. And if that's the origin, by the way, the origin is always in the center of the data, uh, if that's the origin, then the yellow point, it looks like it's going to have a slightly negative component along the red. So that's a slightly negative coordinate E1 along the first principal component. And uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, so that's the second one, it's pointing that way, so it's going to be pretty negative there, right? So that's going to be the coordinates of the yellow point in the new space, okay? So high-level idea, pick for dimensions with the biggest spread of the data and then project the points to those dimensions. So um, now why are we doing this greatest spread? Why are we trying to maximize variance? Why does it make sense? Um, uh, so let's look at a simple, uh, let's, let's look at a simple example. Uh, uh, here's data in two dimensions, x1 and x2, uh, and we could be picking different lines to project the data to, right? So uh, this blue line, that's one way to project the da data. The green line is another way to project the data. Now, why is the blue line, why is the blue projection better than the green projection? Uh, and in general, you can't answer that question uh, because it's kind of arbitrary which one you decide. But one thing that, um, one thing that high variance dimensions preserve is relative distances between the data points. So uh, to see that, look at these two points right there, right? So this point, the red point, and another red point. They were pretty far away from each other in the original space, in the two-dimensional x1, x2 space. If I project them to E, they're still pretty far away from each other, right? So this one's going to be here, this one's going to be here. So they were far, and they, uh, they remain far. Uh, two points that were nearby, say this one and this one, or this one and this one, they're still nearby in this new projection. If I project to the green dimension, then these two red points are going to end up on top of each other, right? So their distance in the original space was high. They were far from each other. I projected them. Now they're very close to each other. So what this projection doesn't do is it doesn't preserve the distances. It doesn't preserve the structure if you consider distances to be a manifestation uh, of the structure. <clears throat> Okay, so um, now you can find other examples where that's not the case, right? So for example, this point and this point, they were, uh, well, you could argue whether they're near or far in the original space, but they end up very close on the blue dimension and they would end up much further on the green dimension. But if you count it over all the pairs, then a dimension 
like the blue dimension, the one where the data is spread out the most, that's going to preserve the most distances. It's going to preserve the distances as accurately as possible. And why do we care about preserving distances? Uh, remember when we talked about the representation, right? Nearby things should be similar to each other for classification. So preserving distances is um, important. <clears throat> so if you pick the dimension with the highest variance, that will preserve the distances as much uh, as much as uh, possible. <clears throat> 